All right, what's up, people? Uh, yeah, I see Tom, Tom. You're rubbing in the nice weather you're having right now. Seventy degrees and sunny in Chicago. We are uh, we're in the middle of a thunderstorm here in South Florida. The lights have flickered like once or twice, but uh, luckily, uh, I'm going to knock on some wood here. Haven't lost power yet, so uh, we're good to go. Welcome to the first bridge quiz that I've done on YouTube. Actually, Th this was a constant lesson, and I I'm sure many of you that are in the audience here or watching uh, afterwards have been to many of these classes that I've had on my site. I wanted to try something different. So uh, here we are. I have a bunch of bidding and play problems uh, that I'm gonna go through with you in the next hour or so. Uh, we're gonna keep it super casual. When I ask questions, the only thing I wanna do today uh, that's a little different than normal is it, when I ask a question, and I'm going to have to remind everybody of this, and, and maybe I'll put a little sign up next time on the screen, but try not to answer right away, right? So, so even if you have the answer, think about it in your head, think about it in your head, and then I'll say, all right, you know, we can start typing answers in if we want. You know, I'm going to try to do it that way just so we can get a little bit of a private answer. That's the only small detail we're going to have today. And also, at the very end, folks, we're going to run through a bunch of stuff today. We're going to see a lot of things that uh, you may have ha had experience with before and haven't had a chance to practice. Uh, I have notes for you afterwards, right? So th there will be an after quiz notes package. There's a link to it in the description of this already, and I'll put that link in here a bunch of times. This just will direct you to a page in my site that will have a copy of this video and we'll also have the notes and I'm not going to cycle through them yet because it's going to ruin the surprise of some of the things you're about to see but don't worry folks if you're trying to kind of scribble down notes as you're watching this you don't have to you're going to get all of the stuff reminded uh, or so you're going to get a reminder of all the stuff in this notes package afterwards and I'll I'll flip through those slides a little bit later for you so let's dance and here we are, hand number one. It goes one club pass to us. Um, we can make a choice here. You, so, so most of you probably already have because you're looking at this and you've just been looking at this one hand sitting next to me. So why don't you go ahead and just tell me what you want to bid now in the chat. One club pass to you. This is a nice is anybody out there question. And, and if you're noticing that you can't chat to me right away, uh, all, all I have set for this one is that subscribers can uh, – can chat. So if you haven't subscribed, it's very it's free. Just subscribe to this channel. You'll be able to chat anything you want, other than uh, really inappropriate stuff. <laughs> yeah, here's our here's our basic understanding of one of a minor pass to us. When we have a four card major, we just show it if we have enough values to bid. And sometimes, even when we don't have enough values to bid, we'll still show a four card or longer major. So we will absolutely just be bidding one heart here. But here is why this problem exists. After we respond one heart, it's going to go one spade on our left, and our partner jumps to three clubs, and it goes pass back to us. Now, I want you to don't type your answer in just yet. I want you to think about this. And for those of you watching after the fact, uh, take, take your time, make your choice. And I'll ask you guys to start typing in your suggestions in a moment. So make your choice in your head. Pretend you're waiting for a right-hand opponent to pass. <laughs> and I'm going to give you guys about 10 seconds, 15 seconds, and I'm going to ask for some suggestions in the chat. Maybe that will give people a little idea. All right, folks, what do we think on this one? What call do we want to make after we responded one heart? It went one spade on our left, and our partner jumps to three clubs. So always use this as like a two-step process. First of all, let's decode what happened here. Um, one thing we're, we're certain of is we don't have a heart fit, right? So, so partner would have raised hearts for sure. But we have to recognize that partner jumped in this auction. They could have just rebid two clubs, but they jumped to the three level. That, folks, is a good 16 to probably about 18, right? So we belong in game, right? That's the question you want to continually ask yourself. So a lot of times the answer is going to be no. Uh, sometimes like this, it should be absolutely yes, and other times it might be maybe. Here, when partner jumps to three clubs, that's like seven, uh, a good 16 to 18. And 
we know we have a nine count. The one thing we don't know that we really need to know is what's going on in this suit that the opponent has bid. We can't bid three no Trump. As much as you might want to, this is the time for what's called the Western Q bid or what we would just call an asking bid here. Three spades says, hey, partner, if you have a stopper in spades, I'd like you to bid three no Trump. If not, do something else. And here we wouldn't mind a club bid. We have three cards in the club suit. And then maybe we bail out at the four level here. But this is a really good spot to bid three spades on. And let's take a look at where we end up. When partner bids three no Trump, they're saying, look, I can stop spades and take a look, folks. Can we make this one? What do you think? Pretty darn good on the contract side of things. We have six clubs and three diamonds all day. Uh, even with them leading a spade, we might get an extra spade trick. Even if they lead hearts, we will eventually develop a heart trick. So this is a hand where North, take a look. They, they might sometimes want to try to bid two no Trump, but they don't know what's going on in diamonds on this hand. So here they, they make a bid that describes their hand. They jump to three clubs, and we just have to kind of let them know that it's okay to continue. If we had less than this, we would just be passing, right? Like let's say we take away the king of diamonds from this hand. We would just say, okay, partner, have a fun time in three clubs. But here we should know we have enough values for game between our two hands. We just need to find out what that game is. So talk to me, folks. Questions, comments. I'm going to leave it a few moments before we go forward. This is how it's going to work, folks. We're going to be sitting for the first part of this at uh, a bidding table where we're going to grind through some hands. And then uh, we're going to get to some play and defense at the end. And then we'll be done. Uh, sorry, Andrew. I thought I saw something you retracted. I'm guessing I answered that possibly. What would a response of three diamonds instead of three? So, so three diamonds here would just be still forward going in a in a way, right? And it would probably suggest that uh, you know you you have some sort of unbalanced hand with hearts and diamonds here, right? So here, three spades is much more direct, and three spades should just say, "Hey, that's the thing I'm worried about, partner." I, and it also confirms that we have game, right? Because three no Trump is going to be this response. Uh, yeah, thank you, Margaret. If you had a stopper in spades, this is a great question. So take a look at this one, folks. Three spades didn't show. Uh, sorry. <laughs> so this three spade bid doesn't show. No, it doesn't. Because think about it. If I had a spade stopper, I would be the one bidding three no trump here, right? So the three spade bid says, look, partner, I can play and uh, we belong in game. Just please bid three no trump. Yeah, the BBO, on Tom, this is a good question. Uh, uh, the BBO robots have a reasonable understanding of this, yes. Uh, they, they, they won't make the bid too often, but when you make it, they should be able to do it. And it, this is a, a rare circumstance where we kind of, no, we know we're not raising partner suit, right? This isn't one of those normal qubits that we're going to use. We'll see some of those maybe today, All right? But uh, this is a spot where we're just happy to get to the right spot and we'll take nine tricks. All right, let's keep going, guys. Unless there are any other questions, those were some really good ones. Keep firing those questions, folks. They're excellent. When we, you get to make them, you're you're helping everybody else out. Uh, Jeff, that's a good question. Uh, in situations, there may be ways that you have an opportunity to show that, meaning uh, he asked if there's a way to show a half stopper. Only if you've already denied one, basically. You might have an opportunity to kind of back into something like that, but I wouldn't worry about it. It's very obscure, and it's not going to help too often. Let's hop on to this next one, and let's look at the auction so far. So this the three spade, but that's what they're, they're uh, telling you what that is here. But I want you to look at this auction. One spade, two spades by our partner north, and then three spades by east. So what's two spades, folks? That's right. Two spades is the Michaels Cubid. These are part of the notes you're going to see later on, folks. Uh, that is showing five hearts and 
five of a minor suit, right? Either clubs or diamonds, right? And it also, it, it's, it doesn't necessarily show uh, a specific range. I, I, you can go two different ways, and I'm not necessarily going to dial in everything here. If you want to know more, I have places you can grab that. But this, this is usually a reasonable hand, right? It's usually, it's almost never really terrible. The times where it might be are these times <laughs> where a partner is non-vulnerable. But it's a lot of shape. It's five hearts, and it's five of a minor suit, one of those clubs or diamonds, right? And it is. it should never be 5-4, right? It should always be 5-5. Five, five. This and the unusual Tuno Trump are the ones that really need to be 5-5. Five, five. So knowing that, folks, make your call. What bid do you make with this hand? See, I have like something in my eye here. <laughs> yeah, there we go. All right, really good four heart bid here. And you want to recognize that you have two fits, right? Even though you you have some wasted value, right? These spades can't necessarily be that great for you, but you know you have nine hearts and at least eight cards of a fit in one of these minor suits this is all systems go uh you don't expect the opponents to bid here either this is a time where you expect to buy it for four hearts and take a look partner had one of those kind of ugly michael's hands right look at that they have a six count how are we gonna do folks success or terrible you tell me and this is with partner having two kings over there I, I will be fair when when we are when we are white red white meaning we're not vulnerable and and red they are this is the time where you're allowed to be super you know aggressive this is really aggressive the suits are not the worst king 10 king 10 and the good thing about this is you have all of your best cards in those two suits um no there's there's rarely a danger jeff i mean there's i suppose there's a time where we could be missing a slam but it seems really unlikely um on this auction and it just seems like we have too much wasted in in two suits right we know we don't have a fit in the other minor suit so one of our minor suit cards might not be that great especially if it's clubs and here it is um uh if i missed a slam here i would be shocked but you know that met partner had just a sick hand and i would expect four spades to be bit on my left which honestly it it was surprising that they didn't decide to step in there with that. But here, if we get to play four hearts, folks, we're going to do real well. We'll lose a spade. We won't lose more than one club, and we'll be able to set up those diamonds. We will have to lose one of those, but we'll make four. All right? And we might make plus one. You're right, especially if we get to set up diamonds before they take all their tricks. It seems unlikely, though. All right, so this is a really good spot. We love to be in this contract. And, uh, oh, sorry, uh, we, yeah, we should always lose a diamond, folks. We, we always have to lose a diamond and a club and a spade, right? If you can tell me how we avoid losing a diamond, I want to see it. <laughs> All right, folks, let's get on to the next auction. Make your bid. And notice, folks, the vulnerability is just like it always is. There's your vulnerability right there. Everybody's vulnerable. What do you do? Did anybody hear that? Could you hear the rumbling of the thunder through my microphone? I'm wondering. All right, it's not that bad yet then. Okay, so this is, and I'm glad uh, 33, 33 Chiron, um, it's, it's a very valid question. It, it, we're vulnerable. Uh, if we weren't vulnerable, this would be automatic, I think, for, for pretty much everybody. Um, for me, I would always open two hearts here as well, and it's simply because I'm way unbalanced. I have 10 cards in two suits, and my heart suit is terrific. I, I think this would be the limits and would be a, an aggressive two-heart bid, but I like the fact that I'm 6'4", 
right? When I'm 6'4 and all of my values are in my Trump suit, I'm okay getting in here at the two level, especially because it's really hard for them to kind of penalize us in these spots. It's not for the faint of heart. And if you passed, it's, it just means that you're on the edge of not being too aggressive, which is not the worst player to be either, right? Somebody needs to be the crazy one in the partnership and others need to be the more disciplined one. But I think this is a reasonably disciplined two heart bid, even at these colors. If you take a diamond and throw it into the spade suit, now I'm six three two two. I don't like it as much, right? In fact, I w would may way be passing in that situation if I were more of a balanced hand. But here with the three of the top five honors, king, queen, 10, and the fact that I'm 6'4", this is a time where it's okay to start dancing. Hey, Chris, welcome to the program, my friend. And now partner bids Tino Trump. And if you saw this morning's tournament, Gavin and I showed our disdain for this bid. But we're going to play along with the robot here. They bid Tino Trump against the, uh, our two heart bid. And that just shows for them, and I think it's reasonable, that this should be, folks, an invitational bid in some way. It should show usually a good 16 or more, something that can play game opposite a lot of our better than normal hands, right? So here we just respond in the most straightforward way, which is what, folks? What do you think? How do you how do we show a hand like this when partner bids to no Trump? This is a good one because it doesn't come up very often. So we might as well check in and make sure we know what's doing. Do you know what I'm going to add to this class? I I, uh, I need to add the uh, the old polling software to this class, and then we'll run we'll run the questions through that in the, in the future. Uh, I think that's great because then we'll have a little private uh, private showing of that. It'd be terrific. All right. So we don't want to bid three diamonds with this hand, even though it makes a whole bunch of sense with our shape. Right, we, partner's not asking that question. They're kind of asking, "Are you a minimum or a maximum?" To show a minimum, folks, we just bid three hearts. Right, that's what shows. Hey, partner, I opened two hearts, and I have nothing more than what I've shown you there. And I, have, I'm kind of, I really don't like my hand too much. Right, any other bid would be more of a, "Hey, partner, I'm, I can help out in some m minor way." Right, here you would, you wouldn't show your diamond suit because it would also show some sort of hand that's better than what you opened with. You can't pass, folks. That's the really un unfortunate part. Tuno Trump is absolutely forcing. In fact, it is it is one of the forcing bids that you can make. What are the others, folks? Do you know? Over a week two bid, what are the other forcing bids that can be made? Are there any others? Is Tuno Trump the only forcing bid after a week two bid? There it is, Tom, right there with the first response. Oh, Judy beat. No, Judy Judy got, got in there, and then Tom right at the end. R-O-N-F. What the heck is that? It is after a week two bid, the raise is the only non-forcing bid. So really the only non-forcing bid our partner makes is three hearts, right? And Well, yeah, Michael, you're right. Four hearts would pretty much be non-forcing as well, but you get the idea. Anything other than that is forcing when partner's an unpassed hand. So here we always have to bid. And in this case, partner chose three no Trump, and we have to understand that, hey, we, we listen to partner. Take a look. Is this okay, or is there something better? What do you think, folks? Has has the robot steered us in a productive direction, or has the robot done us dirty here? Yeah, it's pretty dirt. Four hearts is better, right? And this is interesting. They uh, they could they could really kill us if they're allowed to run spades right off the top for sure. Um, and it could go heart, ten, ace spade through dinner is over right so you really need to be in four hearts and in fact you're very likely to get either the king or queen of spades lead or a low spade and you're going to go down um, but even if you don't you you can maybe scrape together three no trump but you're way more safe to be in four hearts and here i want you to look at something that the robot just apparently didn't understand here quick tricks 
are amazing when they're opposite a nice long suit that you have a fit in. So not only do you have three quick tricks and a roughing value in diamonds, in fact, you have the ace-x of Trump. I mean, you do know you're getting six heart tricks, right? You know you're getting six hearts, and you and they're saying, okay, they're counting to three. But honestly, with me across the table, you might not even know you're getting six heart tricks. My goodness, right? So four hearts is much better. Everyone okay with this one? Good, good. We're going to kind of speed it up just a little bit as we move forward and we get used to what's going on. But I'm going to leave it open for questions, comments. Talk to me, folks. All your questions are amazing because they're not just for you. They're for everybody that's going to ever watch this. So keep them coming. You guys are doing a great job. Let's keep dancing. One heart, pass, pass to you. Make your bid. And take your time with it, right? Don't jump in there and type in right away. Think about it. Make it in your head. Take a few moments and then go. Gauss is, has been in a class with Hazel Wolpert, I think. Or you've just heard us talk about it here, maybe. I don't know. So this is really good. Uh, this is too good to bid to no Trump, even though this is actually uh, a time in the balancing seat where Tuno Trump would show about 19 to 21 points. All right. And I want you guys to understand. Let me get out of the way of this bid here. Uh when we are in the balancing seat, we don't have any preemptive or two suited type bids other than the Michael's Cubid would still be on here. But the jump to two no Trump, we need it to be strong. Unfortunately, this hand, we're just way too strong for it, right? Not way too strong, but we have 22. So what do we do? We double first. Partner bids a spade. And here we go, folks. There's two no Trump. And we get to play three no Trump, right? So Take a look at the rest of partner's hand. Eh, we might have had a chance to find a 4-4 a, a four, four heart fit on this one, but it's really not going to make too much of a difference. How are we going to do, folks? The club position is not too bad. I'll take 5-7. Ah, spades are 3-3, are three, three, but the problem is we're not going to be able to get there. We're probably going to have a real tough time on this one. Look at the heart position also. Oh. <laughs> so we can take two spades two clubs for four and three diamonds for seven and then we're gonna be uh we're gonna be in a little bit of trouble uh did i freeze i don't know are you am i coming through folks can you see me can you hear me everybody okay oh, okay good thanks kelly perfect perfect all right so this hand is is here to show you that in the balancing seat first of all we would always be doubling here for sure but if we did have like 19 to 21 we have this immediate jump to two no trump in the balancing seat that shows that sort of hand so in this seat it's very different than normal and the reason is is that pass is an option that ends the auction right so we don't need any sort of these preemptive bids all right folks let's jump to the next one here it is. One heart, one spade. Make your bid. I will accept uh, two different bids on this one. Yeah, Chris, we can end play impossibly on that last one, and especially if we strip the hand down and we can just throw a heart in, and at some point it'll just go. Interesting. Good question. This could be a time where you would want to show both minors, but this time we actually have a fit for partner suit. 
So uh, some of you, I was waiting for somebody to make the splinter bid, which would be three spades here. But you need four card support for partner suit to do that. So two spades is the bid we make, folks. And that is, and let me get to the uh, correct page here. That is our, our Q bid raise, folks. Right? And that is, hey, partner, I have 10 or more points. And I have support for the suit that you bid. What do we mean by support? We mean eight cards or longer in the suit. So we bid two spades. That's the start. Partner bids two no trump, which is just some sort of balanced hand with some spade stopper. So what do you guys want to do now? Make your bid. Right. There's just I would I would expect partner and as as the robot here to just be, hey, this is an offerish type thing, right? Five, some sort of balanced hand with with a spade stopper. Yep, there it is, folks. The question we always ask ourselves as we talked about at the beginning, do we have enough points for game? Yeah, we do. And the reason we do is because we have a fit, right? And honestly, we're we're darn close even without the fit, right? But here we have a fit, we have roughing value, we have a side five card suit. This is why we do it this way. We want to make sure that if partner has some sort of hand that wants to continue in weird spots, that they know this wasn't just a four heart bid. This was a very good hand with a, with a heart fit. And take a look, partner spade stopper is <laughs> Is not that amazing, is it, folks? Queen empty third. Um, here it looked like they probably just had more of a three heart bid than a two no trump bid, but we have to be the ones that get us to game, and we will. And this game looks like it's going to be super easy, which are where the good ones go, folks. If if you find uh, your your feed freezing, uh, I want you just to refresh, and you'll you'll get right back to it, folks. And uh, just everyone, give me a thumbs up before I head on to the next board. I'm guessing uh, it might have something to do with the thunderstorm that's in my area, but uh, if not, it could be a connection issue as well. Well, here's the problem. The North Hand has, has a worthless spade card and really bad clubs. <laughs> so I would not sell this as a hand that wanted to uh, go forward. I would bid three hearts and see what partner did. And if they didn't want to go forward, I would be happy. I think this is more like an 11 count, really, than, than this full value because of just the spade situation. Let's go to the next hand, folks. Pass, pass to you. Make your bid. And make sure, folks, I'm I'm keeping a pretty good eye on the connection. So uh, if anything's happening with your, your connection, just click refresh at any point and you'll be okay. But it's pass, pass to you. What do we do with this hand? Oh, that is some good, good bidding in this chat stream here. One no trump for sure, right? 15 to 17 balanced, even with a five-card major. That's what we open. Exactly, Kelly. You're all students of Robin Gavin. You know our, our whole reason behind this is the fact that if you open a spade and partner bids a no trump, what will you do? You'll say, uh-oh, I don't really have a good bid for my hand. Sorry, partner. So you open a no trump to avoid these bad bids, and partner bids three spades. Anyone know what this is, by the way, for the robots? I want to see if anyone's up on their robot uh, robot madness. Oh, Jerry, yes, yeah, some of the bids, if you're playing like a call and things like that, some of the bids will be will be different for sure. <laughs> all right so this is a pretty good expert standard agreement except the robot screws it up too much uh the three spade bit is actually shortness which isn't too surprising considering our shape uh so th this is a pretty nice expert standard agreements the three major bids over one no trump show shortness in the major we bid three cards in the other major and 5-4 in the minors in some way, right? Gauss has it in there pretty well. Uh, the robots play this with a four-card major sometimes, which is really frustrating because they, they should just be bidding stamen with those hands in some sort of way, but they, they just for some reason play it this way. But make your bid responding to this call, right? Knowing that partner could, in fact, either be 1-3, 5-4, or 
one four four four. Yeah, really good. So this is this is in the no trump bidding complete guide. In fact, that's that's amazingly unfinished still. So I apologize for that, Tom. But thank you so much for giving me the heads up. Uh, yeah. So we just want to make sure we can withstand a, a spade lead, right? Because that's what's coming. And if we had a bad hand, let's say we had a hand that didn't have a fit, but let's say we only had like three cards in the spade suit and they were three small, we would find a different bid here, right? This is just partner describing their hand. And this is us saying, okay, let's still play three no Trump and take a look. Not the easiest hand to deal with, right? But we're going to get our tricks in a number of different ways here. Who knows if we'll get enough, but this is absolutely the correct auction, folks. Very good stuff. Partner made the worst bid ever, by the way, because they should bid Stamen, right? The auction should be two clubs, two spades, and then three no Trump. The, the problem with the robots is they will allow this, which is really bad, folks. It's much better if it's three. And then five, four, because now at least one of these would be a better source of tricks for us right here. We just kind of have a really rough contract because of the way the robot chose it. But this is here just to kind of alert you to that possibility of an agreement. All right, let's dance. Pass to you. Anyone want a bit? All right, good. This is just an insane meter anyway. <laughs> no one wants to bid. Uh, you know, some pros might get frisky with a hand like this and open like two hearts sometimes, but this is a terrible, terrible choice. Now make your call, folks. Partner opens two, no Trump. Very good. All our systems are on, folks. We want to see if we can play in hearts. So we bid three diamonds, and then it goes double on our left. Pass, pass back to us. Make your call now. And let me ask the audience if we know. What does the pass mean? Chris, you're so fast. So when the double is here, it is, as Dave is suggesting, a lead directing double. And I just want to remind you, whenever we make a, a an artificial bid or, or whenever the opponents do, a double of that artificial bid is lead directing. So our, our West player has said, hey, partner, I want you to lead diamonds. And this is this is where we either can bid three no trump or we can redouble and then bid three no trump, right? Or we can see what the heck happens here. So redouble would, in fact, be a retransfer to hearts. Let's see what that says. So even though uh, Dave is, is actually saying, uh, <laughs> Dave's like, yeah, I'm a little worried to redouble with the bots. We know at least they'll bid something here, right? It's it's five plus hearts. We're just showing our hand. And honestly, this is what you would want to do anyway because you, you can't necessarily be certain here. You do know that partner, in fact, has denied a fit in hearts. That is the one thing that their past signifies, and I'll get to that in just a second. So here when we redouble, partner bids three spades, which shows four to five spades and 20 to 21 points, folks. Make your bid. We did not want that. There we go. <laughs> this is a tough one, folks. So we're we're gonna we're going to talk about the pass and and a couple and one other situation next. But I'm just curious. Make your bid and let's see what happens. the The beauty of this, or not the beauty of this, the the tragedy of this is we can't know it's right. But three no Trump just kind of has to be the choice here. And we have to hope that partner can withstand diamonds. We, we've done our best job. And the key thing here is that we certainly saw that when partner passes after this lead directing double, 
they've been given this opportunity because the double will allow us to bid again. So this pass, in fact, signifies that they do not have three hearts. So we could have bid three no Trump directly, but I think going through this route, knowing that partner doesn't have it, and then backing into it through three no Trump, we can kind of suggest, hey, we, we don't necessarily love this. Here's what we have. But let me show you this little slide here. When these auctions happen, right, and I'm showing you over one no Trump auctions, we will respond to our partner's bid depending on certain things. So when they double our transfer bid, excuse me, when they double our transfer bid, we are going to base our response solely on whether we have a fit in our partner's suit, right? So we know this player is showing hearts. So we will respond to that transfer here by bidding two hearts when we have three or more of them. If we don't, we'll pass. And then as Chris suggested, redouble will be a retransfer and we can go from here. When they double stamen though, our response is gonna be based on stoppers. I'll let you guys dig deeper on this. In fact, I've included another page in the notes that'll give you some practice with this. And there's a course on there that uh, that's, you, know, you can take a look at that will give you some more in insight into this as well. But let's jump on to the next deal, folks, and see what we have for our menu here. One no Trump to you. What do you do? Pass, pass, and no Trump. The bots play a system called Capaletti, which um, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you. There you go. I'll give you what the robots play. This is what their system is. So one no Trump, double would be penalty. Two clubs is a single suited hand. Two diamonds is hearts and spades, majors. Two hearts is hearts and a minor. And two spades is spades and a minor. So let's jump back to the hand. And don't worry, folks. I not only have that, but I have like three others in the notes for you to take your pick from for your partnership. But here, this is really important. When we have a good hand, especially, we have lots of shape. We want to try to make the most descriptive bid we can. So, so th those of you that are bidding two clubs are keeping it to just hearts, right? Two diamonds is a little more flexible and it does show nine cards in your hand. You don't have to be strictly five, five in these situations. You just want to make a bid that's going to give you the best chance of finding the right place to play. And here, when partner bids two hearts, I want you to make your call now. Good stuff, people. So we have a hand that just made our partner bid something, right? <laughs> we we said you must bid partner. You cannot pass. We don't want to punish them. And in fact, partner has a lot of different ways they can go about this. They could have bid three hearts. They could have bid four hearts. They could have bid two no Trump and done something afterwards. They had lots of ways to go about this. They chose the lowest possible way. We respect that. And take a look. What did you say, Chris? They could be two, two, four, five. You've been looking at my notes, buddy. What's going on? <laughs> That's exactly what they have. And this is why we pass, folks. They took a good preference and they said, you pick. This is also why... The Capaletti system is a little bit of a flaw in it. Maybe a system like this one uh, would have done better because we could we allow partner to actually take a preference without taking a preference. They can they can actually bid two diamonds over two clubs and uh, say, hey, you pick, right? So that might be a better system for this, but at least we found our best fit, which was a seven card fit at the two level. Is this going to be terrible for us, folks? Take a, take a quick peek. What do you think?
it doesn't look like it's going to be too terrible, to be honest. Right? If we can get over to dummy in one of two ways, you know, if we ever get over to dummy with a spade, which is super unlikely, but maybe we can get a spade rough before they draw Trump, we can take a diamond finesse. It's not great to be playing it from this side, but the other part of it is just you could have been just defending one no Trump, right? So here with a lot of uh, normal play situations, you're going to be just fine in this spot, okay? All right, folks, let's jump on to the next category. One heart pass to you, folks. <laughs> And just, uh, yep, sorry. This should be a pretty straightforward one for, for all of us that are playing two over one, which should be everybody at this point. If you're not playing it, uh, make, sh make sure to take a look at some of my other videos on YouTube. If you search two over one in my, in my stream, you'll find a bunch of stuff you can take a look at that'll get you on a good start. Uh, but here we just have to bid one no Trump because we do not have enough to game force, right? Two over one, two diamonds here, for example, would be game forcing. Right? We don't have enough for that. Make your choice now, folks. Yeah, this time partner opened one heart. It went pass and we bid one no Trump. And now pass two diamonds. And just a quick... Uh, Quick reminder, folks, if you get any sort of lag here where, you know, it's just uh, it feels like it's frozen. If you just refresh your browser, you should catch right back up to the live portion. Yeah, Chris, let's delay your responses a few moments. <laughs> it's too good. This is a fun situation. It It's a special bid that is a really good way to have two different ways to raise partners second suit uh we bid one no trump because we had six to 12 and we didn't have anything else we could say initially uh that that fit our hand but now partner has shown a diamond suit right and sometimes this may be only three diamonds but almost always it's a four card suit and we have a fit in diamonds and we actually have a better than normal hand even without some this sort of value with 10 points, we would frequently just bid three diamonds because it's a courtesy to partner when they might have more than their 12 to 14 minimum. Sometimes they could have even up to 17 and make this call. So that's what we would do with kind of a marginal hand. With this one, because we did something special to bid one no Trump, and what did we, what did we deny forever when we bid one no Trump, folks? We went one heart pass, one no Trump. What did we deny forever? We denied four spades, right? We denied a, an ability to play spades. And that is where this bid comes in. And it's a bid the robot knows. It is called the impossible spade bid. And it happens in this, in this case where partner bids a heart. We bid a no Trump, always this way. And then they bid two of a minor. Two spades is the best raise of that minor suit that we can have, right? And then the raise to three is just, hey, partner, I'm raising just in case you have a better hand and want to play higher. So this is the bid, folks, and it might be the first time you've ever seen it. Uh, and the robot is saying, what do you think? When they bid three diamonds, what do you think they're saying? Yeah, they're saying, look, partner, you might already push me too high. Stop this. But but it is the best raise we can make. And take a look, folks. We're going to be dancing in a really, really nice contract here at the three level in diamonds. We would get pretty much – we would get crushed in no trump by at least one trick, but maybe more with those uh, the hard positions. So here we're in a nice spot. We're in three diamonds, and we get to just sit back and play a nice comfy contract. Boom. All right. I'm going to get to some later boards here. So let me continue because I want to play some hands and we have spent a little bit of time on the bidding and I have one hand that I need to get us to. Well, let's start with this one actually. All right. 
Make your opening bit. Anybody, anybody want to do anything funky here? You tell me. Yeah. You better not want to do something too funky. This is this is a time where your shape might dictate you opening one no Trump. But your singleton probably you don't love it. And also, you know, you, you might be okay doing something else. But luckily it goes two clubs by partner. So make your bid, folks. Don't uh, don't say anything right away. Give it a moment. Make your bid in your head. Don't type anything in if you have already. Uh, I'm sorry I didn't r remind you, but make your bid first, and then we'll talk about what's happening here. So make your bid in your head, and then I'll ask in about 10 seconds what you guys want to do with the rest. All right, so fire, folks. Put your bid into the chat now. And for those of you watching after the fact, you can pause whenever you want. Take as much time as you need. So that two club bid, as Kelly's pointing out, is Drury, folks. That shows three card heart support and invitational values. It's more kind of, you know, a good eight ish or nine ish to 11. Uh, it can't be 10 to 12 because you would open with 12 points, right? It could have some shape to it though. So two clubs is, Hey partner, I have heart support and I have a, a uh, about 10 to 12 or really nine to nine to 11 is, is the uh, effective one. We don't need to do anything but bid four hearts folks. Sometimes jury is that simple, right? We just need to get our sides to game, right? We have more than enough to play game, especially after partner shows us a fit, we're going to bid that. This is frequently the jury auction you see. You're either going to see I have a bad hand or a good hand usually. Two diamonds would be, and I saw many of you make the two diamond bid in response to jury. Two diamonds would be, hey, partner, I have a full opening hand, but I just am not sure I can bid enough. Uh, I'm not sure I can bid game myself. Whereas if you if you do something else, it's still forward going. The only bid that's bad is when you return to your major suit. All right. Uh yeah, there is our jury bid here. And, well, I mean, a club lead is still not going to lead to us going down, is it? All right? We don't love it, but we're we're probably going to be, ah, the hearts are, well, whatever. The hearts aren't the breaking in the greatest way either, but we'll move on to this. Well, one more, sorry, where is it? Where is, there's my hand of destiny. All right, are you ready, folks? Make your response to one heart first. One heart pass to you. Yeah, usually, uh, usually I would bid clubs first, All right? I, I, w I would usually bid clubs first. If I were opening the bidding, I would probably still bid clubs first here, but I, maybe not. I would, my, I might open a spade with only 10 points, but here after partner opens a heart, this might just be a tremendous misfit. So bidding a spade is probably just a little bit better in the long run. And I'm, I'm going to force you to do it anyway, because I want to get to this next part. So when you bid a spade, it goes two clubs, and your partner doubles. What is that double, folks? What is that double? That's right. That's the support double, right? Partner opened the bidding. We responded one of a major... And our left-hand opponent bid something, and then partner doubled. Hey, partner, I have exactly three spades. So take your time. Don't bid yet. Don't bid yet. It's an important one. Bid in your head. Make your call. And then I'm gonna give it. Yeah, I'm gonna give it again, like ten seconds, and then I, I want some answers to be typed in. So give me ten seconds here. I need a little clock.
All right. Let's see some some choices here. What are we going to do? A heart of spade, two clubs, double, pass. Uh, some of the early bidders that jump to four spades are maybe uh, reconsidering when they see a really good alternative. So let's look. I think the first one to put it in was Judy, uh, which is a good good spot. The opponents are vulnerable. They bid two clubs, and partners double is definitely forcing 100% of the time, right? They, they want us to bid. They're showing support. This is conventional, right? But we happen to have an extraordinary hand where – I guess we have an even better action. And what is it, folks? It is absolutely pass. And now let's kind of, let's hide this board. I'm sorry. I, I don't want you guys to see this. I want you to see it this way. Let's actually start, let's start defending. All right, we are now defending two clubs doubled. We're getting over to our play slash defense portion of the program. Our partner is going to lead the ace of hearts, and we're just going to start by, Seeing what happens here, we have no choice but to play the five of hearts. And then partner plays the king of hearts. It goes seven. Make your play, folks. What do you do? You've made the amazing bit of passing two clubs doubled. Partner has given you a dirty look from across the table for sure. They said, what the heck are you doing? You forgot a support double and you passed? I'm not playing with you next week. And here it is, folks. We, we just want to start clearing our hand, right? We don't. We know the diamond's not a winner, at least for us, right? So we're going to get rid of this and create another roughing value in our own hand. So now it goes king of hearts, low, low, low. And then partner leads the ten of hearts. And it goes jack. Make your play, folks. And pretend you're playing with a good partner. So if I tell you you're playing with a good partner, what is your partner not going to do to you? What shouldn't they ever do to you, especially if you've shown this massive stack of clubs by passing two clubs double? They shouldn't ever be giving you a rough when declares roughing behind you. So, so... So in this situation, well, yeah, maybe not tap you out, but here they definitely don't want to be giving you a rough that you get roughed behind. You get over roughed, especially because there's certainly alternatives to play here, right? So here, if you trust your partner, you can rough with the three of clubs and at least be relatively confident that they have not done this to you, right? If you're worried or if you don't trust that person, they look a little sketchy, you can play the nine of clubs as well. And you probably end up okay in these spots either way. But here it's just a question of thinking about the situation the partner put you in and trusting them, right? So here, there's the three of clubs. Make your play now, folks. Boom, easy game, right? The one thing we don't want to do right now is lead clubs ourselves, right? At least for now, right? We may want to lead clubs ourselves because maybe we take an extra spade trick at some point, right? Do we have to do that right now? Not necessarily. Right? King of spades is pretty good. Right. It goes low, it goes ace, spade, and then it goes diamond, eighth, make your play, folks. It's always a harder decision, Krish, when it's when it's imminent, right? When you need to make the decision before getting all the information here, at least we get to do something, right? Seven of clubs for sure. There goes the king of diamonds to our left. 
Now what, folks? We should probably recognize at some point that uh, we're going to get tossed in, right? So we can play the queen of spades, but we aren't in a rush to do that either, especially considering we should know what about declare spades. Something we didn't talk about earlier, but I was hoping some of you caught. What do we know about declare spade suit? If partner had three spades exactly, that means Declare has three spades, right? There were two in dummy. Partner showed exactly three when they made the support double over here. We had five. So Declare has three, which means it is important to get rid of a club, right? We could cash the queen of spades first and then play a club, right? But... That would, well, either way, we're probably going to get tossed in anyway. But here, this is a perfectly fine opportunity to play a club. It's going to go queen. And now what will Declare do? Well, let's actually put him face up now and show you. Declare doesn't have too many great options, actually. <laughs> Take a look. What can they choose to do? Well, they can play a spade and just kind of end play us into leading clubs. But are we really end played? No, we're just going to have two good club tricks. So I'm just going to start taking the tricks that we're known to be taking. Queen of spades. We would take the jack of spades. What would we lead, folks? We lead a club? Nah, we don't lead a club. We lead a spade because if they rough it and they get it wrong... Let's say a bad player forgets to cash the ace of diamonds. Now you're just going to take more tricks, folks. So here, this is a time where if they played ace of clubs club, you would get the rest of the tricks if they're just kind of normal. They'll, they'll do the normal thing, right? You'll take your rough, and then you can do whatever. You're going to get one club. They're going to get the rest, right? But you'll get this. And let's take a look at how much that'll be, folks. The score will be, oh, yeah, that is... Down four, two, five, eight, eleven hundred. That is a pretty darn good score. And that is much, much better than we could ever have made. And let me replay this for you guys. That's much better than we could have ever made in four spades. Right? That's why vulnerability does matter. And what an amazing way to be able to just pass uh, two clubs doubled and pass a support double for the one time it's right. Everyone okay with this one? Funky hand. It came up randomly, actually. I was actually vetting some hands for a class, and this came up in a bidding table. I thought it was hilarious. So I wanted to share this one with you. And I have some more to share as well. So talk to me, you guys, if you have any questions on this. If not, I'm going to hook us up with the next one. Everybody okay? All right, I haven't heard any questions in there, so let's hit on this next one here. The auction was one spade, pass, one no trump on our right, two hearts on our left, pass, three spades, all pass. Everybody okay? Partner leads the three of spades. Take a look. What do we know? This time I'm gonna I'm gonna clue you into what we should be doing in every defensive situation, right? We should be thinking about what we've seen in the auction and what's going on around the table. And doing that early on the last hand would have led you to the conclusion that hey, I know how many spades Declare has. They have three. Jeff, good good spot. Digging deep. All right, we start out with what we know. Well, we know left-hand opponent has five spades. We know they have four hearts. And we know they're probably like 11 to 12-ish, right? Maybe a bad 13 or something because they were invited to game and they refused, right? So here, 
we should know that declare has that sort of shape and doesn't have the full value to be bidding a game. Okay. Uh, so we play a, we see declare play the nine of spades and we play low. We could play the eight there. That would be kind of signaling something. But we play, the, we see them play the king of spades and then it goes seven of clubs, low, king, ace. Make your play, folks. Olivier, that is not clear necessarily. I'm going to show you why in a minute. All right, what do we do now, though, folks? So what's happened so far, just to give you a quick reminder, partner led a low spade, declare one in their hand, and played a club to the king, which you won with your ace. Make your play. So here are all the hands, folks. We should know this play is correct. We should know partner has two hearts. And the reason we should know is that Declare showed four of them, guaranteed. Dummy has three of them. That is seven. We have four of them. That's 11. So our partner's hidden hand it has only two of them. And I want you to recognize that partner originally led low from their ace third of spades. The reason we're allowed to lead low from an ace is when it's the trump suit, right? You're always getting that trick. You're never going to bed with the ace of trumps. So that was partner's attempt to maybe draw more than one round of trump. They wanted to get uh, the biggest bang for their buck here. So they let a low spade. So it doesn't preclude them from having that. But what we do know is partner is short in hearts, right? We're not sure why they didn't lead their shortness themselves, but we have to recognize it's my time to get our partner that rough, right? And it'll go king of hearts. They might signal with the jack there. It's not necessarily meaningful, though, when you have an honor, you're going to show it anyway. Nine of hearts comes in. There goes that rough. And now they'll still get that ace of spades. And that's down one, folks. Boom, boom. Everyone okay? It's a fun hand. And I replay it and show you all the cards. Just that little bit of thought at the very beginning, which a lot of you had, right? I think some one, one of you was giving partner a rough within a couple seconds. That was really good stuff there. And that's important to just do every time. They have four hearts to my left. Well, partner only has two then. Got to tell them how to lead those doubletons once in a while. But, hey, we can find out ourselves. And once we get in, they allowed us that club entry. We will maximize that for ourselves. All good? Let's do one more. This time we're going to be declaring. And I want you to recognize that we opened one no trump and it went two clubs, which east doubled. Now, the south player in this particular auction didn't know their system and just responded with two hearts. Partner bid three hearts and then right hand opponent bid three spades. And our hand decided to bid four hearts. Okay, I know this is a sick, crazy auction. But I want you to tell me what you think East is looking at, folks. What would possess East to be this sort of bitter in, in these situations, folks? Right, what do we think East is looking at over there? It looks like our partner had some sort of invitational value, right? So so partner has like nine points, you would guess. We have 15. So East could definitely be strong. But one thing we should absolutely know, and Olivier has it probably more on the right side of things, they have at least 5-5 five, five and a lot of strength or 6-5, some sort of crazy shape in those suits. Because notice they doubled clubs, which is lead directing, which I have to remind you, this is the second time we've seen something like this. It's not just strength, it is length and strength, right? So it's a good holding in that suit and it shows length. And the three spade bid is pretty clear. Hey, <laughs> I'm not only willing to show clubs, but I'm bidding spades as well. So I have lots of spades, I have lots of clubs 
and I'm willing to bid this aggressively because I don't think I'm in as much danger, right? And I think we might be able to play it. So with that knowledge, let's start dancing here. Our, our opponent's going to be on lead, and they're going to lead the jack of spades. All right, so take a look, folks. We're going to plan our play for a moment. But we should know that East has, you know, lots of stuff. And honestly, West did lead one of their partner's suits, but the lead directing suit was clubs. So we've, we've dodged a bullet here. We should know that the club position is not really favorable for us. Everyone okay with that? It's going to become useful information for us later. All right, so Jack of Spades is led. We play low from dummy, obviously. Uh, they play the three of spades, and we are going to win the queen of spades, right? So here, that could be a singleton for sure. What else could it be, folks? What else could the jack of spades be? That could be a doubleton, right? They could have six clubs and five spades. They could have six spades and five clubs, right? Uh, but it's certainly one of those two things, right? If they had, it's, I mean, I guess it could be jack 10 third, but that would be so weird that the right hand opponent bid with only a four card spade suit that we just discount that, right? So here it's either jack doubleton or it's singleton jack. And we'll find out relatively soon. But I want to know what you'll do next, right? You just won the queen of spades in your hand. What are you doing now? Yeah, it's time to draw Trump first, folks, right? We don't want to be finessing diamonds and having right-hand opponent rough with a heart, right? We know there's a lot of shape there. We'll be happy if diamonds break reasonably well, and when we play the ace of hearts, we will see it go low, low, queen. That's not too bad, right? Now what do you want to do? Make your play? Anybody want to do anything other than play more Trump? Let me add, ask it that way. Yeah, yeah. We we want to end up in our hand at some point here. Um, we we don't. I mean, we could have saved the Jack of Hearts as well. I'm I'm just gonna make this play. And, and sorry, let me show you what the the Claire or the right hand opponent plays here. They play the Queen of Clubs, and now we return to our hand with the King of Hearts. And now what, folks? Make your play. You're in your hand. You've just drawn the last round of Trump. What will you do? There's a vote for the Queen of Diamonds, or vote for the Ten of Diamonds. Queen. No Deuce of Diamonds. Yeah, I, diamonds aren't breaking, folks. We can, we we're not gonna we're not gonna see three three diamonds, but we we are gonna take a finesse, and it's very likely to be on side. And when we play the queen of diamonds, they actually cover with the king. We win the ace, and then we play a low diamond to our ten, and we see right hand opponents show out. So okay, that's going bye bye, and then we play a diamond to our jack. Boom boom, and they throw away a club. Now, what would you like to do, folks? Make your play. In fact, I'll take one play out of the mix for you. How about this? Um, well, no, I won't. Make your play, folks. Make your play. Ooh, Jerry, you're a little behind, I think. Refresh your screen. I can tell. I, it's weird. I've never really seen this before. I think it might have something to do with the electrical storm that's going on or was going on. But uh, if you do have any sort of lag, just refresh your browser. Yeah, so here's what we know, folks, and it's very helpful. We happen to know East is out of diamonds, right? They've, they've shown out here already. They're also out of hearts. And they have spades and clubs left, folks. And we happen to know that West has at most one spade left. We do not need to trump a diamond. Right? We're going to do that later if we need to. We could have trumped a diamond now. But the best play, and the only play that takes advantage of what we know, is to play spades and let East win. 
And now they will have no chance but to help us by doing one or, or the other thing, essentially. So watch this, folks. Knowing that they have just good spades and good clubs left, our king of clubs is dead unless we get them to lead it for us. And here's where it goes, folks. Seven of spades. All right, there's your winner. What do you do now, folks? What do you do? It doesn't matter. If they lead a low club, we'll win the king. If they lead the ace of clubs, we'll play low. We'll win the king next, and then we have the rest. If they lead a spade, the thing that they may think is right, now what do we do? Well, we take away one of our club losers by pitching a club and trumping it in dummy, and now we have taken one extra trick as well. So there it is, folks. Really nice, what we call a strip and end play. It doesn't require anyone getting naked except taking away the cards that they have safe to exit with. So once they're out of hearts and diamonds, as long as we strip the left-hand opponent of their second spade, we are doing amazingly well. They did not lead the king of diamonds here. They led the jack of spades. All right, so this is a really good... And it's a, I hope it was relatively simple to see. Uh, and you can tell me if it was or not. Um, these are not easy to find. But when some one player releases a lot of information and we get to see them show out of suits, it can become a little easier, especially when we recognize that we just can't ever lead clubs ourselves unless we can avoid it. Some hands you don't have a play like this, and at some point you just have to bite the bullet and say, okay, I hope they I hope they really made a weird bid and don't have the ace of clubs on my right. But here you want to try to avoid that decision if at all possible, and here it's clearly possible by playing it the way we did. Uh, and West is going to be talked to sternly about not leading that club after that lead directing double there, even though... They did bid three spades also, so they gave them two choices. They just picked the wrong one. Uh, that's all I have for the class today, folks. I'll, I'll stand by for some questions, and I'll just show you. Uh, these are the notes that are available. And let me type in, if I have the page open, um, I know it's in the actual uh, comments for this uh, event. And, and let me actually, uh, I'll hop onto the page right now and give it to you. Uh, this is a link to these notes. And you'll see it's just kind of one page. And I want to tell you that all of these pages have been taken out of the lessons that I've done on the site. And I've left those there for you as well. For those of you that have been on the site for a while and known uh, and had a lot of these classes, you will be able to just see the dates and go reference that yourself and go back and take a look. For those of you that haven't, you'll have an opportunity to buy those there. Uh, I'm going to be doing this with regularity. I have a little bit of travel in front of me, but uh, every Wednesday I have free this summer. I'm going to do something like this. I want to keep the bridge quiz alive and well. And here is my, uh, here's the link to this page. Uh, and I'm going to start doing this possibly via subscription in the near future, but I want to see if you guys like it, first of all, and have a little fun with it before we do it. So I'll, I'll be happy to take your suggestions, your comments, or uh, anything you want to talk about until, uh, until we're done. So let me know, guys. And there's that link right there, folks. The link is in the chat. There's your notes package. You can download, you can print those, and there's a ton of stuff on the site that uh, looks a lot like that and is much more in depth. Uh, Judy, I I uh, I will be doing commentary on the World Bridge tournament um, on the side. I, I'll actually be taking part in it in a in a in a very fun way uh, with one of the teams. So uh, I'll we'll have more on that in the near future. But yeah, I'll be I'll be there. I'll, I'll be in Morocco. So. The first time for me going to a world championship in quite a while, so uh, super excited. Ah, uh, Laurel, great to see you as well. Nice. It's been a long time. Hope you're doing real well. I think is uh, is Bob husband? Is that right? Mandar, thank you so much from Mumbai. Wow, what time is it over there? That's uh, that. Thank you for joining live. All right, folks, I, I don't see any questions specifically here, so I'll just drop that link in there one more time. That link is also just in the description of this afterwards. And what this will be each time, folks, is it'll this copy will be right on the page that uh, I send you to, and below that will be the notes. And then anything you guys find interesting and you want to learn more about, there's some selections of classes that are based solely on this lesson below. So I'm really excited about it. Hope you guys get a chance to not only have fun in these classes, but to learn more as you go. Thank you, thank you. Uh, thank you, Margaret. Appreciate it. 2 a.m., and uh, thank you for staying up for this. Hope you had a cocktail with you. Uh, <laughs> 
Uh, all right, guys, thank you so much. I'll see you again, uh, and I'll be here next Wednesday as well. I, I enjoy it, and uh, I, I think we can have a lot of fun with this and come up with some random stuff that uh, we can dig deeper on. Thanks. Oh, Judy, thank you. Yeah, I'm going to keep it that way. I like the uh, – I like the full four-day 12-board tournament because you can get the live sweat. I'm going to do something special on Mondays in the in the relatively near future. I'm not sure if it'll be summer or early fall, but I'll have a four-day tournament and then something special for a Monday event. So thanks a lot, and I'll see you guys on YouTube in the near future. <laughs>